Envision confronting formidable trials and adversities, only to emerge on the other side with heightened strength and sagacity. What if you could tap into an age-old font of wisdom to navigate the twists and turns of life's hardships? Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the teachings of an illustrious Roman emperor and philosopher, Marcus Aurelius. Through his ageless wisdom, we will uncover how to construct resilience and inner fortitude when confronted with life's challenges. Marcus Aurelius, a celebrated Stoic philosopher and emperor of Rome, is frequently hailed as the philosopher king. Despite his status as one of history's most influential figures, he encountered numerous trials and tribulations, spanning from political upheavals to personal sorrows. Amidst these trials, he penned his profoundly introspective and perceptive tome, Meditations, as a tool for self-enhancement and contemplation. Containing his individual ruminations and insights, this renowned masterpiece has motivated countless individuals throughout the ages, delivering counsel on leading a virtuous and rewarding existence. In today's fast-paced and often uncertain world, resilience and inner strength are qualities that have become more important than ever. We are constantly bombarded by changes, whether in our careers, relationships or personal lives. But what if we could learn to navigate these changes with grace and wisdom, turning adversity into an opportunity for growth and self-discovery? This is where Marcus Aurelius's meditations come into play. As a follower of Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius emphasized the significance of nurturing inner virtues and exercising self-control. He held that by concentrating on elements within our control, our thoughts, emotions and deeds, we can triumph over external circumstances and sustain a sense of equilibrium and tranquility. Essentially, Stoicism guides us to become architects of our own contentment and wellness, irrespective of the obstacles we encounter. So, what wisdom can we glean from this eminent philosopher? Within this presentation, we will explore the contents of meditations and uncover 10 enduring life lessons designed to foster resilience and inner fortitude. These insights will not only furnish practical guidance for navigating challenging scenarios, but also motivate us to cultivate a more resilient mindset within our day-to-day -day existence. By applying the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, we can become better prepared to deal with adversity, grow through our experiences, and ultimately lead a more fulfilling and contented life. As we go through these 10 lessons, we will see the importance of controlling our thoughts and perceptions, accepting what we cannot change, focusing on the present moment, cultivating humility and empathy, and much more. Whether you are someone facing personal struggles professional setbacks, or simply seeking guidance on how to lead a more balanced and rewarding life, the teachings of Marcus Aurelius can serve as a powerful source of inspiration and wisdom. And as usual, before we begin, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Become a member to support us and join us. I've prepared something special for those who watch until the end, so don't be weak. Stay until the end. Lesson 1. Mastering Your Perspective Marcus Aurelius's insight serves as a potent reminder of the need to be vigilant about our thoughts and interpretations. By acknowledging that our interpretations of events are not concrete realities, but rather personal viewpoints, we gain the ability to govern our emotional reactions and thought patterns, fostering increased resilience and inner strength. Taking command of our thoughts and perspectives commences with self-awareness. It's pivotal to monitor our thinking and recognize when we're entangled in negative or unproductive thought loops. Once we become conscious of these patterns, we can actively work towards substituting them with more constructive and rational viewpoints. An effective practice to develop this skill is engaging in daily mindfulness exercises. Mindfulness entails immersing ourselves in the present moment non-judgmentally permitting us to observe our thoughts and emotions as they arise without undue attachment or reactivity. Through mindfulness, we cultivate enhanced self-awareness and learn to identify moments when we should adjust our perceptions. Another strategy to wield control over your perspective is by challenging your thoughts through cognitive reframing. 
This entails identifying any negative or irrational thoughts, then actively questioning and replacing them with more balanced and rational alternatives. For instance, if the notion, I'm a failure because I didn't get that promotion enters your mind, endeavor to reframe it as, perhaps I didn't secure the promotion this time, but my worth and capabilities are not determined by this outcome. I can derive insights from this experience and progress in my professional journey. Lastly, enveloping yourself in positive influences can bolster your capacity to manage perceptions. Seek out friends, mentors or role models who epitomize the values and attitudes you aspire to nurture within yourself. Engaging in uplifting conversations and activities can further embed an optimistic and constructive mindset. In summation, mastering our perspective marks a pivotal stride towards cultivating resilience and inner fortitude. Through the practices of self-awareness, mindfulness, cognitive reframing and exposure to affirmative influences, we refine our mental outlook to embrace a more balanced and constructive viewpoint. This shift empowers us to surmount adversity and confront life's trials with heightened confidence and equanimity. Bear in mind, as Marcus Aurelius sagely emphasized, our perceptions are malleable and we possess the authority to shape them in alignment with our benefit. Lesson two, accept what you cannot change. Accept the things to which fate binds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. One of the most powerful lessons that Marcus Aurelius teaches us is the importance of acceptance and letting go of what we cannot control. This is a fundamental principle of Stoicism and a key aspect of building resilience and inner strength. When we learn to embrace life's unpredictability and accept circumstances beyond our control, we can direct our energy toward what truly matters, our thoughts, emotions and actions. Acceptance allows us to make peace with the present moment and find contentment despite the inevitable ups and downs of life. By letting go of the need for control, we free ourselves from the burden of worry, anxiety and frustration, making it easier to face challenging situations with grace and wisdom. To adopt this mindset, begin by acknowledging aspects of your life that are beyond your control. Make a list of situations, events or circumstances over which you have no power and practice, accepting them as they are. This exercise can help you become aware of the difference between what you can and cannot control, allowing you to let go of unproductive attempts to change what is beyond your grasp. Another useful technique is to practice the art of detachment. Detachment involves recognizing and appreciating the impermanent nature of life. By understanding that everything is transient and subject to change, we can develop a more balanced perspective and learn to accept the natural flow of life. When faced with a challenging situation, remind yourself that this too shall pass and try to approach it with an open heart and mind. Meditation can also be a valuable tool for promoting acceptance. By setting aside time each day to calm your mind and observe your thoughts and emotions, you can develop a greater understanding of your reactions to life's challenges. This heightened self-awareness can facilitate recognizing when you're struggling to accept what cannot be changed and help you adopt a more receptive mindset. Learning to accept what we cannot change is a crucial aspect of building resilience and inner strength. By practicing awareness, detachment and meditation, we can develop a more balanced and receptive perspective towards life. Embracing this mentality not only allows us to face adversity with grace and wisdom, but also enables us to appreciate the beauty and richness of life. As eloquently expressed by Marcus Aurelius in his quote, accept the things to which fate binds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Lesson three, embrace the now. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment, imparts Marcus Aurelius, underscoring the significance of immersing ourselves in the present instant and steering clear of being ensnared by past regrets or future uncertainties. By anchoring our attention to the here and now, we can partake in life's richness and nurture a profound sense of inner tranquility and contentment. Centering our awareness on the present reaps manifold rewards, including alleviating stress and anxiety, heightening self-awareness and elevating mental well-being. 
When we cultivate mindfulness and reside wholly in the present, we allow ourselves to wholeheartedly engage with our emotions and experiences, unfettered by past echoes or future apprehensions. This heightened cognizance enables us to plumb the depths of our inner selves and surroundings, fostering personal maturation and self-exploration. One method to inculcate the practice of being present is through mindfulness meditation. This form of meditation entails observing your thoughts and emotions sans judgment, granting you full immersion in the present moment. To embark on this meditation, simply locate a tranquil space, assume a comfortable posture, and direct your attention to your breath. As thoughts and emotions emerge, acknowledge them without critique and gently redirect your focus to your breath. This ritual can be as brief as five minutes a day and wield a profound influence on your holistic well-being. An alternate technique to hone your focus on the present is integrating mindful pursuits into your daily regimen. This might encompass endeavors like mindful eating, where you savor every morsel, attuning to the flavors and textures of the sustenance, or mindful strolls, where you attune to your surroundings and the sensations of your body as it moves. By fusing mindfulness with commonplace activities, you can foster a heightened reverence for the present instant and foster a deeper connection with your thoughts and emotions. Ponder allocating a fragment of each day to introspection and self-appraisal. The act of journaling can prove a potent conduit to process your experiences, emotions and thoughts, refining your mindfulness of the present moment. By introspectively pondering your day, and identifying recurring themes in your thoughts and conduct, you can extract invaluable insights that will steer you towards being centered in the present and making more conscious decisions as you forge ahead. Lesson 4. Cultivate humility and empathy. Whenever you're about to find fault with someone, ask the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I'm about to criticize? Humility and empathy are essential virtues for building resilience and inner strength. They help us develop stronger relationships, foster a more compassionate mindset, and cultivate greater self-awareness. Marcus Aurelius's quote reminds us that before judging or criticizing others, we should first reflect on our own imperfections and strive to understand the experiences and feelings of those around us. Practicing humility involves acknowledging that we are not infallible, and that we can learn from others, regardless of their status or background. By adopting a humble attitude, we become more receptive to feedback and personal growth, allowing us to overcome challenges and adapt to new situations more effectively. To practice humility in your daily life, strive to listen more and speak less, pay attention to the ideas and opinions of others, and be open to the possibility that you may be wrong or have something to learn from them. Additionally, be willing to admit your mistakes and take responsibility for your actions. This willingness to be vulnerable can help you grow as a person and develop a more resilient mindset. On the other hand, empathy involves putting yourself in another person's shoes and trying to understand their feelings, thoughts and experiences. This ability to connect with others on a deeper level can help you navigate difficult situations and strengthen relationships, making you more resilient in the face of adversity. To develop empathy, practice active listening when conversing with others. Give them your full attention and strive to understand their perspective without judgment. Ask open-ended questions to encourage deeper sharing and demonstrate genuine interest in their feelings and experiences. Volunteering or engaging in acts of service can also help you build empathy. Helping others, especially those in need or facing challenges, can provide a greater understanding of their experiences and emotions fostering a deeper sense of compassion and empathy. Humility and empathy are key components of building resilience and inner strength. By practicing active listening, engaging in self-reflection, and participating in activities that foster compassion, we can develop a more empathetic and humble perspective on life. Lesson 5. Practice Gratitude. There are numerous benefits to embracing gratitude, Studies have shown that people who regularly express gratitude experience increased happiness, improved mental health, stronger relationships, and even better physical health. Grateful individuals tend to be more optimistic, have lower levels of stress and anxiety, 
and are better equipped to handle difficult situations. To integrate gratitude into your daily life, consider starting a gratitude journal. Every day, write down three things you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. This simple practice can help you shift your attention from the negative aspects of life to the positive ones, allowing you to recognize and appreciate the good things that often go unnoticed. Another way to practice gratitude is to express your appreciation to others. Take time to thank friends, family and colleagues for their support, kindness and understanding. By acknowledging the value of their contributions to your life, you not only strengthen your relationships, but also reinforce your own sense of gratitude. Additionally, make it a habit to reflect on your achievements and accomplishments, as well as the challenges you've overcome. Recognizing your personal growth and the lessons you've learned can help you appreciate the journey you've traveled, nurturing a deeper sense of gratitude for the experiences that have shaped you. Mindfulness can also play a role in developing gratitude. By paying attention to the present moment, you can notice the small joys and pleasures that often go unnoticed, such as the warmth of the sun on your face or the laughter of a loved one. By savoring these moments, you can nurture a greater sense of gratitude for the simple gifts life offers. Practicing gratitude is a powerful way to enhance your overall well-being, cultivate a positive mindset and build resilience. By maintaining a gratitude journal, expressing appreciation to others, reflecting on personal growth and practicing mindfulness, you can develop a deeper sense of gratitude for the many blessings of life. Lesson 6. Transform challenges into opportunities. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way, conveys Marcus Aurelius, imparting a potent lesson that adversity need not be a roadblock, but rather a pathway to personal growth and self-improvement. By reshaping our outlook on obstacles and setbacks, we can foster greater resilience and inner fortitude, enabling us to conquer even the most daunting circumstances. Challenges possess the potential to catalyze personal growth in manifold dimensions. They serve as crucibles for forging novel skills, accumulating invaluable experience, and unearthing deeper layers of self and potential. Furthermore, prevailing over adversity can kindle an augmented sense of self-assuredness as we acknowledge our capacity to confront arduous scenarios and emerge fortified on the other side. To recast adversity as a springboard for learning and advancement, commence by adopting a growth-oriented mentality. A growth mindset is predicated on the belief that our abilities and intellect can be nurtured through unwavering dedication and strenuous effort. When confronted with a challenge, interrogate yourself about the skills or insights you can amass from the encounter and how this can contribute to your evolution as a more adept and resourceful individual. An additional strategy to embrace adversity as a harbinger of growth is to hone the art of reconceptualizing pessimistic thoughts. Upon encountering a demanding predicament, strive to pinpoint the negativity that ensues and proactively transmute it into affirmations that are more sanguine and empowering. For instance, should you catch yourself ruminating, I'm ill-equipped to manage this, endeavor to reframe it as, this is indeed a testing juncture, yet it beckons a chance for me to learn and evolve. Additionally, drawing inspiration from the sagas of others who traversed adversity and fostered personal development can prove salutary. Immerse yourself in the lives of renowned figures, delve into biographical accounts, or engage with podcasts delving into narratives of individuals who confronted formidable odds and exploited them as stepping stones to ascendancy. These exemplars stand as a potent testament to the latent potential for growth and metamorphosis inherent within each obstacle. Lastly, contemplate enlisting the sucker of friends, kin, or counseling professionals when grappling with adversity. Encompassing yourself with a supportive network can furnish precious motivation, counsel, and viewpoints, enabling you to perceive challenges as openings for growth rather than insurmountable barriers. Enveloping adversity as a crucible for growth constitutes a bedrock facet in constructing resilience and inner vigor. By adopting a growth-oriented mindset, perfecting thought reframing, drawing from inspirational wellsprings, and leveraging a support network, we stand poised to reconfigure challenges as platforms for erudition, growth, 
and the refinement of ourselves. Lesson 7. Guided by Reason The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Marcus Aurelius emphasizes the crucial role that rational thinking and logic play in our overall happiness and our ability to overcome adversity. By guiding our thoughts and actions with reason, we can make more informed decisions, manage our emotions more effectively, and face challenges with greater clarity and resilience. Rational thinking is important for overcoming adversity because it allows us to objectively assess a situation, identify potential solutions, and weigh the pros and cons of each option. By approaching challenges with a logical mindset, we can minimize the influence of impulsive emotions like fear or anger, which often cloud our judgment and lead to poor decisions. One way to develop rational thinking is to practice critical thinking skills. This involves questioning assumptions, evaluating evidence, and considering alternative viewpoints. When faced with a difficult situation, Take a step back and ask yourself what assumptions you might be making, whether there is enough evidence to support your beliefs, and if there are alternative explanations or solutions you may have overlooked. Another strategy for cultivating rational thinking is to engage in regular self-reflection. By periodically examining our thoughts, beliefs and actions, we can gain a deeper understanding of our motivations, biases and thought patterns. This self-awareness can help us recognize when our thinking might be influenced by emotions or false assumptions, allowing us to redirect our thoughts towards a more logical and grounded approach. It's also important to practice emotional regulation, as strong emotions can often interfere with rational thinking. Techniques like mindfulness meditation and deep breathing exercises can help you manage your emotions more effectively, creating the mental space needed for logical and clear thinking. Finally, consider seeking opportunities to learn and develop your problem-solving skills. Engage in activities that challenge your mind, such as solving puzzles, playing strategy games, or participating in debates. These experiences can help enhance your logical thinking skills and increase your ability to face adversity with reason and clarity. It's a vital component for overcoming adversity and building resilience. By practicing critical thinking, Engaging in self-reflection, managing emotions, and honing problem-solving skills, we can develop a more rational mindset that allows us to tackle life's challenges with greater clarity and success. Lesson 8. Nurture Inner Tranquility The soul takes on the hue of its thoughts. Marcus Aurelius underscores the profound influence our thoughts wield over our emotional equilibrium and inner serenity. Fostering inner tranquility is pivotal for constructing resilience and upholding emotional equilibrium, enabling us to confront challenges with greater efficacy and exuding composure amid adversity. Inner peace holds significance on multiple fronts. Primarily, it equips us to navigate stress and anxiety more adeptly. When we find solace within ourselves, we are better poised to grapple with the pressures and uncertainties that life invariably presents. This emotional equilibrium can act as a bulwark against burnout, diminish the vulnerability to mental health concerns, and enhance overall well-being. Secondarily, inner peace empowers us to think more lucidly and formulate sound decisions. Unencumbered by emotional tumult, we can approach challenges armed with heightened clarity and concentration, facilitating the generation of more efficacious solutions and strategies. An efficacious method for cultivating inner peace entails partaking in activities that yield delight and relaxation. These might encompass communing with nature, indulging in hobbies, or fostering connections with cherished ones. Prioritizing self-care and engaging in soul-nourishing endeavors can replenish emotional reservoirs and engender a sense of equilibrium and serenity. Likewise, inculcating salubrious coping mechanisms for stress and negative emotions proves indispensable. This could encompass the practice of deep breathing exercises or involvement in physical pursuits like yoga or strolls. These techniques can unshackle tension and reinstate emotional equilibrium. Ultimately, contemplate embracing a routine practice of gratitude as expounded upon earlier. By channeling attention toward life's positive facets and vocalizing gratitude for bestowed blessings, you can cultivate a more sanguine outlook 
and foster inner peace. If you've made it this far, well done. Consider yourself strong, because many have given up along the way. Comment dare me here in the comments for me to see who's really strong. Now that you've made it this far, you'll surely stay until the end. Lesson 9. Practice Detachment Hold on to what is spiritually superior, regardless of what others think or do. In this lesson, Marcus Aurelius encourages us to practice detachment from external events and circumstances. By focusing on our internal values and spiritual growth, instead of seeking validation or satisfaction from external sources, we can develop greater resilience and inner strength. The benefits of detachment are numerous, Detachment allows us to maintain a sense of equanimity and emotional stability, even in the face of adversity or challenging situations. It also helps us avoid becoming overly attached to outcomes, possessions, or the opinions of others, which can lead to stress, anxiety, and disappointment. To cultivate detachment in everyday life, start by becoming more aware of your thoughts and reactions to external events. Pay attention to how you respond to situations and practice observing your emotions and thoughts without becoming overly attached to them. This increased self-awareness can help you recognize when you might be overly invested in external circumstances and make a conscious effort to redirect your focus inward. Another tip for practicing detachment is to regularly remind yourself of the impermanent nature of life. Acknowledge that possessions, relationships and circumstances are subject to change and that seeking lasting happiness from these sources is ultimately futile. Instead, strive to find contentment and inner fulfillment by focusing on your personal growth, values and spirituality. Developing a strong sense of identity and understanding your core values can also help you cultivate detachment. When you have a clear understanding of what truly matters to you, it becomes easier to let go of external factors that may not align with your values. Take time to reflect on your core beliefs and use them as a guiding force in your decisions and actions. Finally, engage in regular spiritual or reflective practices such as meditation, journaling or prayer. These practices can help you deepen your connection with your inner self, promoting a sense of detachment from external influences and encouraging a greater focus on personal growth and spiritual development. Practicing detachment from external events and circumstances can be a powerful tool for building resilience and inner strength. By cultivating mindfulness, embracing impermanence, understanding your values, and engaging in spiritual practices, you can develop a sense of detachment that enables you to face life's challenges with greater grace and equanimity. Lesson 10. Forge ahead. Refrain from indulging in fantasies about possessing what you currently lack. Instead, assess the primary blessings you do possess, and then with gratitude, remember how you would yearn for them if they were absent. In this ultimate lesson, Marcus Aurelius underscores the significance of unwavering determination and perpetual progress in surmounting adversity. By directing our attention toward the blessings we already hold, and upholding a mindset of growth, we can continue advancing and evolving, even when confronted with challenges. Determination holds pivotal importance in triumphing over adversity, for it equips us to surmount obstacles, glean wisdom from setbacks, and persistently advance toward our objectives. By maintaining an unswerving momentum, we nurture resilience and inner fortitude, while also honing the skills and wisdom required to confront forthcoming trials. To sustain motivation and a growth-oriented perspective, commence by setting well-defined and feasible goals that align with your values and passions. A lucid vision of your aspirations can serve as an anchor, steering your focus and motivation, even in the presence of hurdles or setbacks. Divide your goals into smaller, manageable steps and acknowledge your progress at each juncture to sustain motivation. Another strategy for preserving motivation is practicing self-compassion. Acknowledge that setbacks and challenges are integral facets of life 
and extend kindness and empathy to yourself when grappling with difficulties. By nurturing self-compassion, you can uphold a constructive attitude and sustain the motivation to persevere, even when adversity arises. Moreover, enveloping yourself with a supportive community of kindred spirits can help fortify motivation and a growth-oriented mindset. Seek out friends, mentors or support circles that share your values and ambitions and draw inspiration and encouragement from their achievements and journeys. Finally, allocate time for regular introspection into your progress and accomplishments. Recognize the barriers you've surmounted, the skills you've acquired and the personal growth you've experienced along the journey. This reflective practice can foster an unbroken sense of momentum, spurring you to surmount challenges and chase after your objectives. Maintaining unwavering determination and perpetual progress is indispensable in vanquishing adversity and cultivating resilience. By defining clear goals, practicing self-compassion, surrounding yourself with support and introspecting on your journey, you can stay motivated and continue forging ahead, irrespective of life's challenges. We've just journeyed through 10 impactful life lessons extracted from Marcus Aurelius's meditations, offering us a roadmap to construct resilience and inner fortitude. These lessons have gifted us with priceless wisdom, guiding us to steer our perceptions, embrace the immutable, center on the present instant, nurture humility and empathy, wield gratitude, seize adversity as a catalyst for growth, abide by reason, nurture inner serenity, embody detachment, and sustain ceaseless progress. If you've made it this far, don't forget to comment the word dare me down below. By integrating these timeless teachings into our daily lives, we can promote personal growth, overcome adversity, and live more meaningful and purpose-driven lives. It's important to remember that building resilience and inner strength is a lifelong journey, and implementing these lessons requires time, practice, and dedication. As you face the challenges and setbacks that life presents, turn to the insights of Marcus Aurelius and endeavor to integrate the principles he eloquently shared in his meditations. Through this process, you will not only cultivate greater resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity, but also unearth a heightened sense of inner tranquility, purpose and fulfillment. Trust is one of the most basic requirements in any type of relationship, whether it's a friendship, a romantic relationship, or a family member. For this reason, in this video, I will discuss 10 characteristics of people you should never trust, according to Stoic philosophy. First and foremost, to determine if a person fits into one of these characteristics I'm about to mention, Observation is necessary. However, this is relatively easy. Just analyze the person's speech and actions to get an idea of who they are and what their essence is. So making this clear, I will comment on each of these types of individuals and explain why you should not trust them. Before we begin, please check your subscription to the channel. Watch until the end because I have something special for you at the end. And as usual, don't be weak. Stay until the end. Let's move on to the first type of person, narcissists. When dealing with narcissistic individuals, the Stoics would remind us of the importance of not allowing other people's behavior to affect our inner peace. Practicing indifference towards their self-centered actions allows us to maintain our mental peace amidst their vanity. Think about it. If someone is always talking about themselves and barely cares about others, they are hardly someone you can trust as they only have eyes for themselves and consistently prioritize their own needs. It doesn't matter who they are. You can't trust narcissistic people because they elevate their own image to be the most important thing in the world. They don't want anyone to be better or equal to them. They are the type of people who will do anything to further enhance their self-image, and this compulsive act of desiring and admiring themselves is extremely dangerous because it's impossible to know what such a person is capable of doing to maintain their desired image. Typically, they are the kind of individuals who make others take the blame for their own mistakes. 
Therefore, don't trust people who talk excessively about themselves and only seek to impose their opinions on others without listening to anyone else, as these individuals can harm you at any time to achieve their goals. The second type of person is the gossip. Stoicism also teaches us how to deal with gossip and hurtful words from people. Stoics emphasize the need not to give power to others' opinions about us. If someone reveals secrets or shares information about another person, it's highly likely that the same person will do the same to you, gossiping about you and your life behind your back. Believe me, it's almost certain that this kind of thing will happen when someone gossips. It's not just a habit, but an action done for pure pleasure. So don't think that just because someone is your friend, they won't tell others your secrets. Don't make that mistake. The only advantage you can get from a gossip is if you want the information to spread because then you just need to tell the gossip and they will do all the work for you. The third type is the person who constantly irritates you. When it comes to dealing with annoying or manipulative people, Stoicism offers us the practice of self-reflection. Instead of reacting emotionally, we can stop and think about how our own perceptions and reactions influence the situation. It's one thing when you're going through a tough time in your life and easily lose patience with someone, not because of the person, but due to the daily stress you're under. It's a completely different situation when you're calmer, but constantly get irritated around a specific person. If that person is capable of constantly annoying you, it's because they subtly provoke you by throwing ideas that confuse you and subtly feed your doubts little by little in small doses so that you can't fully understand their emotional and psychological games. Believe me, there are people who act this way for pure pleasure. So be cautious of these subtle little games because if the person can irritate you all the time, it's because they're poking you with gestures and words and you don't even realize it. The fourth type is the indecisive people. As for indecisive individuals, Stoicism encourages us to focus on what we can control, our own decisions and actions. It's easy to explain why these people are not trustworthy. How can you trust someone who is always hesitating about which decision to make? If they can't even define a direction for their lives, how can you trust them? They are also entirely unpredictable because you don't know exactly what their decisions will be. Since their own personalities aren't fully formed, they are indecisive individuals, lacking a strong enough personality to act and choose the path they want to follow. To be direct on this point, trusting an indecisive person is like trusting a child with a knife. You don't know what they'll do when you're not around. The fifth type is the two-faced individuals. Regarding people who have two faces, Stoicism would advise caution. Instead of worrying about their actions, we can focus on cultivating virtue within ourselves. You've probably had an experience like this. They are people who seem to like you but spread rumors about you behind your back, and this behavior extends to other people as well. So don't be surprised when others speak ill of you. In one moment, they're smiling and being friendly, and in the next, they're speaking negatively about you. What I recommend is that when you start noticing this kind of behavior, it's better to exit the relationship as quickly as possible. Don't miss the chance to master your emotions. Grab the self-knowledge ebook now. Click the link in the first pinned comment and unlock your true potential. The sixth type is the curious one. From a stoic perspective, it's important to set boundaries in conversations and share information prudently. Stoics suggest keeping a distance from people with insatiable curiosity because it can lead to the disclosure of harmful information. Furthermore, this curiosity may be linked to envy. So, always be cautious about whom you share information with. After all, it's challenging to be sure that the person doesn't intend to use any of your information harmfully in the future. If someone displays constant curiosity about something, it's best to distance yourself or not trust that person. However, it's important to make something very clear. Don't confuse pleasant conversation with excessive curiosity. What I mean by this is that obviously when you're getting to know someone or talking to a friend, the person may occasionally seek a topic or try to get to know you better by asking about your life, 
like your work, studies and what you're doing. That's just a normal part of a conversation. However, what you need to understand is that the curious one is the person who will ask about your life all the time and sometimes about sensitive things. For example, the person might ask about your salary, which is already a bit strange to ask. If you decide not to answer and change the subject, later the person asks the same question again. That's what I'm referring to. This is the type of person we should be cautious about before granting our trust. So, not only can you not trust this kind of person, but if you have the opportunity, distance yourself from them. The seventh type is the person who is friends with everyone. Stoicism would remind us that we cannot control how others perceive us. Instead of seeking universal approval, Stoics emphasize the importance of cultivating authenticity. Who hasn't met someone like that, who smiles at everyone, wishes the best for everyone, hugs everyone, and says that you can always count on them? In summary, it's the famous type of person who wants to be popular, extroverted, and please everyone. I'm not saying we should judge someone just because they have these characteristics. What I want to advise is not to trust blindly because someone who smiles at everyone, tries to please everyone, and always makes promises has the sole goal of being popular. The goal of this type of person is to be the center of attention. So for him or her, you are just another one, just another number, a person who will be won over. People like this are in search of attention, living through illusions. Knowing this, it's always good to be suspicious because extroverted people who want to be excessively popular often replace anyone quickly, and you could be next. The eighth type is the one who constantly criticizes something, especially other people. Stoics would emphasize the importance of constant self-evaluation instead of spending time criticizing others. The Stoic focus is on improving ourselves and our character. If someone spends their time criticizing other people, usually through gossip, rumors, or even trying to harm someone's image, they are likely the type of person with a bad character. Think about it. If you go around speaking ill of others and wasting time on gossip, I imagine that if you are a decent person with things to do in life, like working, taking care of your own path and paying bills, you probably won't go around talking and spreading rumors about others. What I mean here is that those who overly criticize the lives of others clearly have nothing better to do and are unhappy enough to make unnecessary comments about others. Therefore, be suspicious, do not respect, and do not have consideration for this type of person, because if someone easily speaks ill of others, they can easily start speaking ill of you too. If you've made it this far, well done. Comment down below if you were trusting and respecting someone with some of these characteristics up to this point. But wait, it's not over yet. I still have two more types of people to show you. The ninth type is people who are always involved in many problems. Stoics encourage us to take responsibility for our decisions and emotions instead of blaming luck or circumstances. These people live with problems and intrigues, claim to have bad luck, and for them, life is just a punishment. Every day they say a new difficulty arises, and each day seems to bring a new consequence. The person is there, telling everyone they don't know what's going on, that everything is difficult. In conclusion, be cautious of this type of person. There's nothing wrong with being suspicious, because if the person is full of problems, it's not a coincidence. It's not the universe conspiring against them, but rather the person sabotaging themselves every day. They probably make poor decisions, don't learn from their mistakes, and likely don't control their own emotions. Therefore, I advise you to be suspicious of this type of individual, because if you sympathize with their sad and difficult story to the point of always wanting to help, their problem can quickly become your problem. So be cautious because people like this who collect obstacles and dramas only have one true difficulty in this case, themselves. And I imagine you don't want that difficulty by your side. The tenth type is people who pretend to listen to what you say. In situations where people pretend to listen, stoicism would guide us to be assertive and if necessary, 
distance ourselves from conversations that do not enrich us. You know that type of person who, when you say something and try to share an idea, responds with a simple, yes, I understand, that's true, and nothing more. That can be annoying and even disrespectful. The worst is when the person talks about what they want, and when it's your turn to speak, they simply pretend to listen, get distracted with their phone, or agree without really caring about what you're saying. In other words, they heard you, but they're not really listening. Let's be honest, the minimum requirement in a conversation is that the person pays attention to what you're saying, otherwise it's not a conversation. So if one day you're talking to someone and you realize that the person isn't paying attention, or worse, they start using their phone while you speak, clearly demonstrating that they're not listening to what you're saying, then simply stop talking. It's not worth talking to walls. If the person isn't paying attention or is just pretending, then don't waste your time. If that's the case, stand up and say you're leaving. After all, you're not obliged to spend your time with people who aren't interested in what you have to say. In summary, analyzing the different types of people who can undermine trust provides us with valuable lessons in the quest for more authentic and meaningful relationships. By incorporating Stoic teachings, we learn to maintain our inner peace, cultivate virtue, practice authenticity, and exercise self-control in challenging situations. Welcome to Dare Me Motivational Channel. It's a pleasure to be here again. This video is truly unique. It's possible you've seen countless videos about Stoicism, but let me tell you, this video stands out exceptionally, making it different. It contains a wealth of ideas and perspectives that are rarely explored. Therefore, I urge you to watch it with great attention because within these words lie treasures of wisdom. In fact, we encourage you to watch it more than once, as each viewing could reveal new layers of knowledge. Additionally, we suggest you take meticulous notes of each principle we will share with you. These timeless lessons could be the compass that guides you towards a fuller and more meaningful life. Before we start, I want to make you a very special invitation. The Dare Me Motivational channel now has a Telegram group. I invite everyone to click on the first link here in the description or in the comments. There, you will receive first-hand content, find out about the news, receive offers for our products, and I will leave the chat open on certain days so we can talk to each other. I'll see you there. Link here in the description or in the comments. So, without further ado, let's start exploring the 50 Stoic principles that will change your view of life. Don't miss the chance to master your emotions. Grab the self-knowledge ebook now. Click the link in the first pinned comment and unlock your true potential. Principle 1. Learn to distinguish what you can control. The Stoics, like Epictetus, invite us to delve into a deep reflection on the concept of control in our lives. Cognitive science supports this notion by revealing that constant worry about the uncontrollable can lead to high levels of stress and anxiety. Epictetus left us a pearl of wisdom by saying, do not expect events to happen as you wish, accept them as they occur. This implies that instead of fighting against the currents of life, we should accept them and focus on our actions and choices that are within our sphere of influence. Principle 2. Virtue as a guide. The Stoics believed that virtue is the cornerstone of a fulfilling life. Positive psychology supports this idea by pointing out that the pursuit of personal virtues is associated with greater life satisfaction. Seneca leaves us with a profound reflection. The wise man is content with being wise, no more, no less. This statement emphasizes the importance of living an authentic life centered on personal values rather than seeking external approval. Principle 3. The Power of Self-Discipline Epictetus reminds us that self-discipline is an essential pillar for self-transcendence. Modern psychology supports this idea by demonstrating that self-discipline is linked to success in life. His teaching, no one is free whose mind is not like a master, urges us to recognize how our impulses and desires can limit our freedom if left unchecked. Self-discipline liberates us from the chains of our momentary appetites and desires. Principle 4. 
the transience of life. Marcus Aurelius invites us to contemplate the ephemeral nature of existence. The psychology of wisdom supports this perspective by showing that thinking long-term reduces concern for superficial matters and helps us deeply appreciate each moment. As the philosopher emperor reminded us, everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. This statement urges us to embrace impermanence and live with gratitude for the present. Principle five, practice empathy. The Stoics advocated for empathy as a pillar of healthy human relationships. Modern social psychology supports this idea, demonstrating that empathy enhances the quality of our social interactions and our personal satisfaction. Epictetus challenges us to put ourselves in others' shoes, saying, first say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. By cultivating empathy, we become more understanding individuals, more connected to our environment. Empathy is crucial, my brother. Principle six, choose your response. Influenced by the Stoics, Viktor Frankl showed that even in adversity, we have the freedom to choose our response. As he said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. This principle reminds us that even when circumstances are challenging, our power of choice and how we respond are within our control. Harnessing this power can transform how we experience life. Principle seven, embrace simplicity. The Stoics, like Seneca, embraced simplicity as a means to inner peace. Research on minimalism suggests that having less can lead to greater happiness and mental clarity. Seneca said, it's not because things are difficult that we dare not venture. It's because we dare not venture that they are difficult. This urges us to simplify our lives, freeing ourselves from the burden of the superfluous and focusing on the essential. Principle eight, the value of reflection. The introspection promoted by Marcus Aurelius has psychological benefits, such as reducing stress and anxiety. As he said, nothing happens to any man that he is not formed by nature to bear. Reflection allows us to better understand our actions, emotions, and thoughts, enabling us to make more informed decisions aligned with our values. Principle nine, willingness to change. Epictetus teaches us that we should accept what we cannot change and have the courage to change what we can. Positive psychology of change supports this principle. Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. By changing our perspective and actions, we can face life with more resilience and control over our circumstances. Principle 10, the importance of the present moment. The Stoics value the present. Mindfulness psychology shows that living in the present moment enhances happiness. As Marcus Aurelius said, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. This principle urges us to appreciate and seize the current moment, recognizing that the past is irreparable and the future is uncertain. Principle 11, gratitude as a pillar. Gratitude emphasized by the Stoics has shown a positive impact on mental and emotional health. Practicing gratitude daily can increase life satisfaction. As Seneca said, life is like a loan that we can use for anything, but we must pay it back one day. Recognizing and appreciating what we have instead of focusing on what we lack leads us towards a fuller life. Principle 12, embrace vulnerability. Epictetus urges us to accept our vulnerability as human beings. Psychological research shows that self-acceptance reduces anxiety and depression. Epictetus said, if you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid with regard to external things. By embracing our imperfections and limitations, we free ourselves from excessive self-demand and find greater inner peace. Principle 13, community matters. The Stoics value relationships and community. Sociological studies support this idea, showing that strong social connections are related to happiness and longevity. As Seneca said, no one is the owner of all his wisdom. The wisdom belongs to us all. Collaboration and mutual support in the community can enrich our lives and strengthen our resilience. Principle 14, moderation in all things. The Stoic principle of moderation aligns with scientific wisdom about balance in life. 
Psychological research shows that moderation in habits and behaviors is key to mental and physical health. Epictetus advised, do not desire what you don't have, be thankful for what you do have. Maintaining a balance in our actions and desires allows us to live in harmony and avoid harmful extremes. Principle 15, serenity in adversity. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, promote serenity in the face of adversity. The psychology of resilience emphasizes the importance of this attitude. Marcus Aurelius said, adversity is the test of a man. Only when he has been tested in adversity can he know himself. Facing challenges with calmness and determination strengthens us and allows us to grow even in the toughest situations. Principle 16, simplicity as elegance. Stoic philosophy advocates for simplicity as a source of elegance and clarity. Design psychology supports this notion, showing how a simplified environment and life can enhance creativity and productivity. Epictetus reminded us, things are the way they are and not the way we should name them. Reducing unnecessary complexity in our lives allows us to focus on what truly matters. Principle 17, strength in adversity. The Stoics, like Seneca, believe that adversity can be an opportunity to strengthen oneself. The psychology of resilience suggests that facing challenges can develop emotional resilience. Seneca said, do not complain about your life. If you can improve it, do so. If not, then accept your fate. Learning to face difficulties with determination and courage can lead to significant personal growth. Principle 18, the wisdom of listening. The Stoics value active listening as a way to learn and better understand others. The psychology of communication emphasizes the importance of this skill in improving interpersonal relationships. Epictetus advised, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Practicing attentive listening fosters empathy and enriches our connections with others. Principle 19, authenticity and honesty. Epictetus and the Stoics emphasize the importance of living an authentic and honest life. The psychology of authenticity shows that being true to oneself is related to personal satisfaction. Epictetus reminded us, freedom is the only worthy goal in life. It is won by disregarding things that lie beyond our control. Practicing honesty and authenticity liberates us from the mask of hypocrisy and allows us to live with integrity. Principle 20, mastery of emotions. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, advocated for the mastery of emotions. Emotional psychology supports this idea, highlighting how emotional regulation can improve the quality of life. Marcus Aurelius advised, do not let your emotions control you. Change your thoughts and you'll change your emotions. Practicing self-awareness and emotional management helps us make more balanced decisions and face challenges with composure. Principle 21, Deferred Gratification. The Stoics promoted deferred gratification as a means of self-realization. The psychology of self-discipline shows how delaying reward can increase long-term satisfaction. Epictetus said, temptation often comes in the form of an immediate opportunity to satisfy a desire. Practicing patience and self-control allows us to achieve more meaningful and lasting goals. Principle 22, the strength of resilience. Resilience, emphasized by the Stoics, has been extensively studied in positive psychology. Marcus Aurelius advised, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. Cultivating resilience allows us to face challenges with flexibility and strength. Through adversity, we can grow and thrive, becoming stronger and wiser individuals. Principle 23. Continuous self-assessment. The Stoics advocated for continuous self-assessment as a tool for personal growth. The psychology of self-awareness emphasizes the importance of reflecting on our actions and behaviors. Epictetus advised, examine your words and deeds and you will soon see in what direction you are moving. Practicing self-assessment helps us identify areas for improvement and stay on the path of virtue. Principle 24. Self-compassion. Self-compassion promoted by the Stoics aligns with the psychology of self-compassion. Seneca reminded us, 
There is no one more unfortunate than the one who never faces adversity. Practicing self-compassion allows us to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding, especially in challenging times. Principle 25. The importance of continuous education. The constant pursuit of knowledge and wisdom was a fundamental principle of the Stoics. The psychology of lifelong learning suggests that continuous learning enriches our lives. Epictetus advised, learn, teach. If you can't teach, write. If you can't write, reflect. Staying open to new ideas and experiences enriches us and allows us to grow as individuals. Principle 26. Empathy towards others. The Stoics valued empathy towards others as a means to strengthen relationships and community. The psychology of empathy shows how putting ourselves in others' shoes improves the quality of our social interactions. Seneca advised, Man is sacred to man. Practicing empathy towards others helps us build deeper and more meaningful connections. Principle 27. Mental Discipline Cultivating a disciplined mind is a fundamental principle in Stoicism. Cognitive psychology supports the importance of mental self-regulation. Epictetus advised, You are a slave to what you do not control. Practicing mental discipline allows us to free ourselves from destructive thoughts and negative approaches, leading to a more balanced and mindful life. Principle 28. Adversity as a teacher. The Stoics, like Marcus Aurelius, considered adversity as an opportunity for growth and learning. The psychology of post-traumatic growth highlights how overcoming challenges can lead to greater resilience and wisdom. Marcus Aurelius advised, Adversity is the test of a man. Only when he has been tested in adversity can he know himself. Through difficulties, we can develop and gain a greater understanding of ourselves. Principle 29. Conscious decision-making. Conscious decision-making, emphasized by the Stoics, is essential for a meaningful life. The psychology of decision-making highlights how thoughtful choices can lead to more satisfactory outcomes. Epictetus advised, first say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Practicing conscious decision-making allows us to live in alignment with our values and goals. Principle 30. Persistence in Virtue. The Stoics regarded persistence in virtue as the key to an ethical and meaningful life. The psychology of morality suggests that living in accordance with our principles leads to greater personal satisfaction. Seneca advised, virtue is the only good, virtue needs nothing else. Practicing persistence in virtue guides us towards an authentic and meaningful life. If you're still here, well done. Consider yourself strong, as many have already given up along the way. Check your subscription to the channel. It is very important that you are subscribed. Comment, dare me, if you've already joined our Telegram group, so I can see that you've joined us. And as usual, don't be weak. Stay until the end. Principle 31. Effective Communication. The Stoics recognized the importance of effective communication. The psychology of communication highlights how clarity and empathy in communication can strengthen relationships and prevent misunderstandings. Epictetus advised, speak and say what is more beautiful than silence. Practicing mindful and considerate communication can enhance our connections with others and promote more effective communication. Principle 32. Detachment from Outcomes. Stoicism advocates for detachment from outcomes as a way to reduce anxiety and suffering. The psychology of detachment shows how focusing on the process rather than the results can increase personal satisfaction. Marcus Aurelius advised, do not expect the fruits to be more than the labor. Practicing detachment allows us to free ourselves from worrying about what we cannot control and find peace in the action itself. Principle 33, Physical Self-Discipline. The Stoics also emphasized physical self-discipline. The psychology of self-control highlights how maintaining healthy habits can improve the quality of life. Epictetus advised, the body is the prison of the soul. Practicing physical self-discipline such as exercise and a balanced diet allows us to take care of our health and well-being, positively impacting our mind and emotions. Principle 34. Integrity in Actions. 
Integrity in actions is a fundamental value in Stoicism. The psychology of morality emphasizes how acting consistently with our values promotes personal satisfaction. Epictetus advised, a man's life is dyed by the color of his imagination. Practicing integrity in our actions helps us live in accordance with our principles and maintain a positive self-image. Principle 35, mindfulness in daily routine. The Stoics valued mindfulness in daily activities. The psychology of mindfulness shows how being present in each moment can reduce stress and improve well-being. Epictetus advised, when you wash your hands, when you have your meals, when you lie down to sleep, be aware of these actions. Practicing mindfulness in our daily routines allows us to find beauty and meaning in the small things in life. Principle 36, time management. Time management is essential for a productive and meaningful life. The psychology of time highlights how organization and planning can increase efficiency and reduce stress. Marcus Aurelius advised, life is wasted by forgetting. Practicing time management allows us to effectively utilize our most valuable resource, time, to achieve our goals and live a more fulfilling life. Principle 37, generosity and kindness. Generosity and kindness are central values in Stoicism. Positive psychology emphasizes how acts of generosity can increase happiness and well-being. Seneca advised, life is like a play. It's not about how long it lasts, but how good it is. Practicing generosity and kindness towards others not only benefits those we help, but also enriches our lives and makes us feel more connected to humanity. Principle 38, humility and success. The Stoics valued humility even in success. The psychology of success suggests that humility can keep us focused on growth and continuous improvement. Epictetus advised, do not be concerned with the things you can't control, but with the way you handle the things you can control. Practicing humility helps us stay centered on our values and avoid arrogance and complacency. Principle 39, understanding impermanence. The Stoics recognized the impermanence of life. The psychology of wisdom suggests that accepting this truth can lead to a greater appreciation of each moment. Marcus Aurelius advised, everything you have is today was yesterday's belonging, tomorrow belongs to someone else. Practicing an understanding of impermanence allows us to live with gratitude for the present and face life with serenity. Principle 40, virtue is the greatest wealth. Stoicism emphasizes that virtue is the greatest wealth one can possess. The psychology of happiness highlights how living in accordance with our values promotes greater life satisfaction. Seneca advised, true wealth is to not desire more. Practicing virtue as the highest value frees us from the obsessive pursuit of material goods and allows us to find true prosperity in our ethical actions. Principle 41, the value of simplicity in life. The Stoics advocated for simplicity as a way to attain inner peace. The psychology of simplicity highlights how simplifying our lives can reduce stress and increase happiness. Epictetus advised, happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and some things are not. Practicing simplicity helps us focus on the essential and enjoy a less complicated life. Principle 42, the importance of personal authenticity. Stoicism promotes authenticity as a fundamental virtue. The psychology of authenticity emphasizes how being true to ourselves is related to greater life satisfaction. Marcus Aurelius advised, love the life you live, trust the journey you've been through. Practicing authenticity allows us to live in accordance with our values and beliefs, leading to a more meaningful and significant life. Principle 43, Tolerance for Ambiguity. Tolerance for ambiguity is an important skill advocated by Stoicism. The psychology of resilience highlights how being flexible in uncertain situations can increase adaptability. Seneca advised, the wise man cannot receive anything unless he is prepared to receive it. Practicing tolerance for ambiguity helps us face challenges with serenity and develop our adaptability. Principle 44, purpose and passion in life. 
The Stoics valued finding a purpose in life and living passionately. The psychology of personal fulfillment emphasizes how having a sense of purpose can increase life satisfaction. Epictetus advised, first, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Practicing the pursuit of meaningful purpose and living passionately leads to a richer and more gratifying life. Principle 45. Personal Responsibility. Personal responsibility is a key value in Stoicism. The psychology of responsibility emphasizes how taking responsibility for our actions promotes growth and maturity. Marcus Aurelius advised, if it's endurable, then endure it. Stop complaining. Practicing personal responsibility empowers us to take control of our lives and make informed decisions. Principle 46. The Power of Positive Communication The Stoics valued positive communication as a way to improve relationships and promote harmony. The psychology of interpersonal communication highlights how positive communication strengthens bonds. Seneca advised, If you wish to be loved, love. Practicing positive communication allows us to build healthier and more satisfying relationships. Principle 47. Respectful Acceptance of Differences The Stoics advocated for respectful acceptance of differences among individuals. The psychology of diversity emphasizes how tolerance and respect for differences promote peaceful coexistence. Epictetus advised, First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Practicing acceptance of differences helps us build more inclusive societies and relate to others in a more harmonious way. Principle 48. The Power of Gratitude Gratitude is a fundamental value in Stoicism. Positive psychology emphasizes how practicing gratitude improves life satisfaction. Marcus Aurelius advised, When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive. Practicing gratitude allows us to appreciate what we have and find joy in the little things in life. Principle 49. Patience in the Pursuit of Knowledge Patience in the pursuit of knowledge is a value promoted by Stoicism. The psychology of learning highlights how perseverance in acquiring knowledge leads to greater intellectual growth. Seneca advised, It's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Practicing patience in the pursuit of knowledge allows us to explore ideas and perspectives in depth. Principle 50. Recognition of Interdependence Stoicism acknowledges the interdependence of all human beings. The psychology of community emphasizes how recognizing our connection with others can enhance our relationships and well-being. Epictetus advised, There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. Practicing recognition of interdependence helps us understand that our actions affect others and urges us to live more consciously and ethically. These Stoic principles are treasures of wisdom that can profoundly transform how we view and live life. By applying these teachings in your daily life, you will be on the path to a more meaningful, balanced and fulfilling life. Stoic philosophy, supported by modern psychology, offers valuable lessons to attain wisdom and self-transcendence. In the deep corners of history, where great thinkers forged their ideas and philosophers wove the complex fabric of knowledge, we find a timeless gem known as Stoicism, a philosophy that stands as a beacon in the midst of a storm, a guide to navigate life's turbulent waters with grace and serenity. The Stoics, from Seneca to Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, bequeathed us a legacy of wisdom that transcends centuries and borders. At its core, Stoicism teaches us that true wealth lies in the cultivation of virtue, that suffering can be transformed into strength and that the key to a fulfilling life lies in recognizing the difference between what we can control and what we cannot. Throughout this journey through the 50 Stoic principles we've explored together, we've unraveled the secrets of self-discipline, gratitude, empathy, resilience, and humility. We've discovered how modern psychology supports these ancient teachings, demonstrating that applying these principles can lead to a more meaningful, balanced and happy life. 
Today, we extend an invitation to you. Return to this video time and time again, take notes, reflect on these principles and share them with those seeking a path to a fuller life. Stoicism is a beacon that can illuminate your path, offering you tools to face challenges with serenity and embrace joys with gratitude. So, dear viewer, we invite you to embark on this journey of self-discovery and growth. Discover how Stoicism can change your perspective, how it can help you lessen life's pains and find peace amidst adversity. You won't just watch this video once, but many times. Because in each viewing, you'll find new gems of wisdom that will guide you toward a fuller life. That's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed this content. Don't forget to comment Dare Me if you joined the Telegram group or watched until the end. If you've made it this far, comment that you watched until the end so I can see you in the comments. For your attention, thank you very much. May everyone be with the Creator.